Good day, subscribers. Thank you so much. What is going on? Hello? Elon, what's going on, man? Hey, I'm in the middle of recording a video. Do you mind if I call you back a little later? It'll just be a minute. What's going on? Oh, Jim Chanos is on CNBC again. Oh, you're talking about the same Jim Chanos that like shorted Enron stock back when I was like in the sixth grade and he's still trying to have a success as good as that, that Jim Chanos? Yeah, 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 the same one that like goes on. Oh, Tesla, oh, it's going to zero dollars. Oh, Tesla, they, they don't know what they're doing. It's a big pyramid scheme. Oh my goodness. So what did he say about Tesla today? He didn't talk about Tesla. You're, you're talking about Jim Chanos. He didn't say a bad word about Tesla. Well, what stocks he short? Well guys, Jim Chanos has a new short position out there that we gotta go ahead and talk about, okay? Now I've thrown shots at Jim Chanos many times on this channel for his short position he has on Tesla and how he always goes on these different publications and talks about Tesla. If you don't know Jim Chanos, he got famous, at least in the stock market community, for being short Enron stock back in like 2000, 2001. Obviously Enron collapsed. That was a whole messy situation. If you never looked into Enron, there's some great documentaries out there on it. I believe there's one on Netflix as well that goes into everything that happened there with Enron. It was a crazy situation, but he got super famous from that in the stock market community. And uh, in recent years, he's kind of been known to go on CNBC and Bloomberg and these different channels and talk a lot of trash about, uh, about Tesla stock at the end of the day, okay? He's short Tesla shares. He's been short these shares for several years now. Um, and, and you know, he's just, he's in a situation with Tesla stock where um, I think he's on the wrong side of the bet, okay? And you can go back and watch videos from three or four years ago where he goes on and he talks about how Tesla is an overpriced car company, okay? And just to, you know, like finalize my thoughts around Jim Chanos in the Tesla short position before we get into this new one, Jim Chanos, at one point you were right. You were right. Tesla was an overpriced car company a few years ago, okay? But the roles have completely reversed now and I think Jim Chanos needs to just swallow his pride, cover that short position, and maybe even consider going long Tesla because it went from a situation where Tesla used to have this massive valuation but was doing hardly any numbers because they had like the Model S and Model X in the market and yet they had this massive, massive valuation on the company and now we're in a situation with Tesla stock where they're starting to put up massive numbers and the numbers are going to get a lot bigger over the next few years. And so Tesla and the valuation hasn't changed much over all those years, right? And so the, the company went from a situation where it was massively overvalued and Jim Chanos, you were right three or four years ago. The company was overvalued. You're wrong now. The company is very undervalued. This is a company that's going to be one of the biggest auto manufacturers in the world, if not the biggest within the next few years. And you just, you, you just need to swallow your pride and say, you know what? We messed up on this one. Um, let's cover our positions. We were right back in the day, but things have changed. The valuation hasn't changed, and yet Tesla's become a massively bigger company. I think he needs to just do that and say, you know what, forget Tesla. There's a lot of great stocks out there to short, and to be shorting Tesla, the, the leader in electric vehicles and self-driving vehicles, that's a dangerous play there, Mr. Chanos, all right? All right, so the new short position he has is against Grubhub, okay? Jim Chanos bets against Grubhub. The famous short seller doesn't like the food delivery company. If you don't know what Grubhub does, uh, basically it's a food delivery company. You know, you could be a driver for them and go pick up different things at different restaurants. People order on the app and they get the food delivered to their house, okay? Now for a little look into Grubhub, okay, by the way, ticker symbol is G R. You be on this stock, all right? First off, the stock's down over 6% today. The market's not really doing anything, and the stock's down over 6%. Uh, in my opinion, first off, that's 100% because Jim Chanos went on CNBC and talked about this, this Grubhub position, this being a short position and whatnot, because this stock, prior to him going on there, was down about 1% today. And then after he went on, and the, the, you know, the article started being written, and the video started coming out and whatnot, next thing you know, the stock's down 6 plus percent. So this is 100% because he went out, and he's spoke down on Grubhub stock and basically stated why he short his position, okay? So the stock's down over 6% to this. The stock has about a $5.5 billion market cap. So it's not exactly a teeny tiny company. It's a decent sized company, $5.5 billion market cap. A trailing P on this one of 217, so that's you know pretty unbelievably high. It does have a forward P under 30, but I have a hard time seeing them being that profitable to meet that forward P of 30. I think that seems a little bit ambitious there. Uh, we'll have to see what happens over the next year 
year. And if they meet that number, if they beat that number, or if they just completely miss that number, in my opinion, that, that Ford P is, is probably not going to be hit there. Okay. So as far as why is he short this position? Let's read a little bit into this. Chano's revealed his short position on CNBC's halftime report on Thursday. He believes that a combination of lower fees and higher employee costs will become a massive problem for Grubhub in the future. Now, real quick here, I just want to mention something here. They talk about employee costs there in this article. Well, it's not really employee costs. They're really talking about the independent contractor costs, the people that are actually driving their cars around and delivering these meals to homes and whatnot. Um, that's a, that they're not employees technically. They're actually independent contractors, but that's really what he's talking about. They're not really necessarily their employees. There's independent contractors, okay? As it stands, Grubhub barely makes any money right now. Now, he says, okay, they barely make any money. Grubhub is making almost no money per order. It's something like 15 cents. There's just no margin in this business, Chano said. The situation is expected to get worse as pressure from both competition and new labor laws eat into the company's paltry bottom line, okay? Now, we've talked about the food delivery service a few times. Whenever I kind of talk about Uber stock, we obviously have to talk about Uber Eats, right? And I will say that is a business right now, the food delivery business, that that is unbelievably intensely co competitive. I mean, you look at all the players, I, I have most of them up here on the screenshot here, but this isn't even all of them, okay? The Postmates, the Grubhubs, Uber Eats, Caviars, all these different ones, okay? This is not even all of them, but there's a ton of players in this particular space, everybody wants it, and you have a lot of restaurants pitting these guys against each other. So whether we're talking fast food places, or whether we're talking like sit down restaurants, like the mom and pop restaurants, they're all kind of putting these guys against each other and they're saying, which one's gonna give us the best deal? Which one's gonna give us you know, a free delivery charge or something like that? And so you have all these different guys and gals competing against each other, and in the end, it makes it a situation where it is very hard to make money in this business, at least as of right now. Now, over time, this will consolidate. Some players will buy other players, and there will probably be two main players in this space, okay? One is for sure gonna be Uber Eats. The other will probably be Grubhub over time, but we're gonna have to see how all that shakes out. It could be Postman. It could be a combination of some other companies. We'll have to see who's the other main player, but needless to say, this space is intensely competitive right now, which means short-term profitability is definitely gonna be very hard when you have all these companies competing against each other. So I definitely agree with him on that, okay? He says, competition from Uber is a huge problem, according to Chanos, because Grubhub doesn't have the resources to be as aggressive as the ride-hailing company. Chanos likened competition with Uber to being locked in a cage with a psychopath with an ax. Holy smokes, Chanos, you've been locked in a cage short in Tesla stock for too long. Like that analogy is ridiculous, okay? But I will say 100% he is correct. You have Uber here that, that wants to win the market share game by all costs, okay? They have the most money, they have the most capital, they have the easiest access to the capital markets of maybe any company in the world, or at least one of the, the main companies in the world that has ability to get any funding from anybody that wants, okay? And you're having to compete against Uber? That is tough. And we we know this is a game that Uber is really winning around the world and that's a really tough competition there for Grubhub to be fighting against somebody that basically has unlimited resources and has many other business lines, right? Um, when I, whenever we talk about any of these tech giants, which Uber is kind of slowly going to morph into a tech giant over time, but when you talk about the legacy ones, the Googles, the Apples, the Amazons, the Microsoft, those companies are really tough to fight because they might have other cash cow businesses that they can fund another business for losses and if you're only that one trick pony, like a Grubhub is, it's tough. It's really tough to compete in the end, okay? Chanos also pointed out that the restaurant business itself is tough and essentially stagnant, which raises questions about long-term growth of the delivery business. So the, the restaurant business basically saying, you know, once all these players grow and they, they you know, get whatever market share they're gonna get, the restaurant business itself is kind of a stagnant business, so they're not gonna be able to grow like a huge because it's not like the restaurant business is like an, a booming industry now. Now the, the, the you know, you might have some, you know, restaurants expanding, but you have other ones decreasing their business or, or have locations going out of business. So it's somewhat of a stagnant business there is basically this point he brings up, okay? Grubhub's profitability has already been downtrending. With adjusted EBITDA down 19% in the second quarter, Chanos isn't the only one concerned about Grubhub's business model. The stock has tumbled nearly 60% since peaking in late 2018 as investors reassess the company's growth prospects. And so I will say, I agree with Jim Chanos on this one. Am I gonna personally go 
out and short Grubhub shares? Absolutely not. But I will say I do agree with Jim Chano's assessments here on being negative on Grubhub stock. It, it, you know, I, when I just look at that stock, it's a one trick pony that's competing against somebody like Uber. I don't want to compete against Uber, okay? Look what they, you know, kind of done with Lyft over time. Lyft has always been, you know, uh, basically, it can't get much market share because Uber will just then undercut them in price. So Lyft has always been stuck in a situation where it has to take massive losses and it can't really gain any more market share against Uber. And that's a really tough position to be in. So if I look at a business like Grubhub, I don't really want to be involved with that business model. It's just a one trick pony in the delivery space. They have a good chance of being one of the top two players in there if you look on a five or 10 year basis, but it's really going to be tough for them to compete against Uber Eats over time in my personal opinion because of Uber's capitalization and their ability and their willingness to reinvest billions of dollars into a business even if it loses them lots of money in the short term. And uh, that puts a business like Grubhub in a really tough position. So a rare thing that I actually agree with Jim Chanos, but you know, with that being said, I'm not going out there and shorting Grubhub shares. I would much rather you know put my money in some great companies that have a chance to 2x, 3x, 4x their businesses over the coming years rather than trying to bet on you know a downfall of a business like Grubhub there, guys. So anyways, let me know your opinion in that comment section. As always, make sure you smash that thumbs up button. It means a lot to me. Thank you for watching and have a great day.